I'll tell you, it's in some ways, it's sort of a dream job. This doesn't pay the best. Uh, you know, it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm running around in a Lamborghini out here, you know, chasing lizards. But in terms of getting back from the things that, that I appreciate that are important to me, I'm actually able to boots on the ground, physically be a part of a lot of these different things. That's one beautiful thing about working on conservation projects is more often than not, there are things that you can actually do and be a part of and witness with your own eyes, those improvements. The Eastern collar lizard in the interior highlands, they're not doing well. We've seen populations crashing at an alarming rate. They're very different than any other lizard you would see in this part of the country, but also the habitats they're a part of are very unique. They are part of these glade habitats, sort of like little miniature rocky desert areas in the middle of the Ozarks or the Washita's. These glade communities are real sort of hot spots of biodiversity. You can think of them as sort of like little islands in an otherwise typical forest or woodland. The world of the glade is like a microcosm of strange looking plants. They've got fleshy leaves, they've got hairs, they've got spines. They're doing whatever they can to survive in this particularly harsh environment. But they obviously do it well because they've been here for millennia. I mean, they've survived much longer than we've been on this planet. Historically, in certain parts of Arkansas, glades would have been a significant component of the natural landscape. And a lot of those have been lost. When we first found glades, they were small little pockets, islands within a forest, but they were so thick and overgrown, they were once actually referred to as cedar glades because when a person would see this glade, it would just be covered in eastern red cedar. After doing some research, we realized that before fire suppression, those glades were open, expansive habitats. They were connected for miles. I think because we're the ones that decided to suppress fires, you know, that we're, the humans are the ones that, that kind of made this decision to stop burning. We're somewhat responsible for fixing what we did wrong. You know, this was what we thought was best a hundred years ago, and now we've discovered that that wasn't the right decision. We started realizing, wow, we have these amazing large glades, but they need help. They're being encroached by cedar, they're being encroached by other woody species. We began to understand what could be done, and the fact that if you did manage the area, that the species diversity would increase. Even just removing the cedar alone, you see just an explosion of growth. It really greens up after you cut the cedar. It's, it's amazing to see. And then after a prescribed burn or two, to remove some of that woody debris and sort of reinvigorate that ground flora, we really see an incredible response. You can relatively quickly reverse that degradation that has occurred. We monitor those sites, we analyze that data, and that tells us exactly what kind of effect we're having. Now we've got species that we didn't have before. We have rare wildflowers that were just lying dormant. They were waiting on someone to save them. You know, there's pollinator species just flourishing in these areas that weren't here before. It's a huge opportunity, why not? open them all up and see what happens. There's more bird life in those open areas. There's more bats that are flying through there at night eating all the insects. Opening them up has just really made this whole area just come alive. I feel like it's human nature to want to leave this world better than we saw it. And glades are one of those, you know, rare ecosystems that we have an opportunity to bring back to life. To know that you've used all the knowledge that everyone at the table has had to do that good, to provide that habitat, to bring that species back from the brink of extinction, it's just a great feeling. From a big picture standpoint, it's pretty easy to point out the importance of habitat restoration for this really pretty charismatic species that I can take lots of pictures of. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more than just the eastern collar lizard, it's the entire community. 
you hear from ecologists and conservation biologists and anyone that's in you know natural resources you know all the doom and gloom stories right this is the reality of what's going on with our planet but whenever you have those that are actually positive stories as you can imagine are huge uplifts and make you feel like we're getting it right and we're making these improvements and we're getting to see this and you know my kids are going to be able to come out to some of these spots and see this critter you know that stuff makes it all worthwhile <laughs>